Hello, I'm Kirk Hansen, Executive Director of the Markala Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. And we're fortunate today to have with us Michael Winston. Michael is uh, a longtime executive in global leadership and strategy, helping companies such as Motorola uh, and later Countrywide, which we're going to talk about, uh, develop broad strategic approaches to leadership development uh, and to how they manage their businesses. Michael, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Good. You are known best today as a whistleblower, as an individual who had raised issues at Countrywide Financial while you were an executive there, and who continues to push those today in trials and follow-ups to trials. I'd like to talk about the whistleblowing experience. The two incidents that uh, you've talked about that I know of are the, the, the two involving first a building that could easily be called a sick building and that your employees and many of your colleagues that came with you from Motorola and, and elsewhere to Countrywide uh, worked in this building where people were getting sick and you even got sick and you pushed Indeed. that even when the company said no, the building's fine. Why, why was that important to push that and eventually even to call the California Occupational Safety and Health Agency and, and uh, quote, get countrywide in trouble? Well, um, respond to a couple of things. I hope after 30 years I'm not known primarily as the uh, uh, countrywide whistleblower. I hope I'm known for the work I've done during the entirety yes. of my career. Um, your last question, though, is, is very seminal. Um, this was not about, in this instance, business practices. Mm -hmm. This is people who were getting sick in a building that was allegedly toxic. Whether it was or was not toxic, to me, was not the issue. That they got sick and were fearful of returning to the building is the issue. And these were meritorious claims. They were legitimately sick. Mm -hmm. And it was not just my team that was getting sick. It was people from every, I think, I don't recall how many people mm -hmm. were in the building, maybe just under a 1,000, maybe even over a 1,000. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to take action when something like that happens. Now, the company said, we've studied it. Yes. There's not a problem. Yes. Uh, uh, why? When do you take that as an adequate answer, and when do you say, no, I've got to go further? Uh, well, um, yes, they, they did hire an outside third party to do an investigation. Midway through the investigation, <clears throat> they said that the investigation had been concluded and that there, were, uh, there was nothing awry in the building. Um, and they, they said all the work was done. This while there were still canisters in my office Doing measuring measurements. scores. Yeah. And while I was told that it, the report was not going to be released until Monday, August 7, 2006, and a letter was written at 3.30 a.m., which tells you somebody stayed mm -hmm. up pretty late or got up pretty early, to mm -hmm. saying that the building's fine, um, there's nothing wrong with it. If people continue to get sick in the building, then you've got to address the root cause of what is getting them sick. And you can't paper it over, you can't say, we've looked, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. This is, I, I happen to have been the senior most manager in the building. Um, that fact notwithstanding, I would have um, been hyper vigilant on following up with this, even if I were the junior most manager in the building. Mm -hmm. Because these are work colleagues who were getting sick, legitimately sick. They're, th they're Breathing problems, couldn't breathe, and it was frightening them that mm -hmm. they, couldn't, they couldn't breathe. Metallic taste in their mouth, headache and stomach ache, mm -hmm. dizziness, rapid heart rate. These are serious symptoms. Mm -hmm. They don't happen in a vacuum. They happen as a result of... Going something. outside the company and calling a, federal, a, a state agency uh, uh, represents uh, escalation, uh, yes, a serious the, escalation. Yes, um, and I only went outside 
upon learning of several things. Number one, I started, I went through every level of the organizational hierarchy to try to address it quietly, efficiently, effectively, and on the local level. It was not my intention to go outside. It was only when a letter was released to all hands saying that the building has been found safe before the results were done, number uh -oh. one. Number two, a woman who had worked with me was on one of my teams prior at Merrill Lynch, um, wrote me an email saying, I am, it is five weeks before I am due to give birth with my first child. I am afraid to go to work in this building. Since we've arrived here, and this is almost verbatim, uh -huh. since we've arrived here, people have been complaining of headaches, stomach uh -huh. aches, shortness of breath, dizziness, metallic taste in okay. mouth. Um, she said, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to come to work in this building, and so are my colleagues. And right after I read that letter, I spoke to the head of facilities and asked him, what's the status of mitigation efforts? Mm -hmm. And he said, there is no status. We consider this a one-off incident. And mm -hmm. uh, he said, this case is closed. Let's, That's let's, what prompted me to call Cal Ocean. Let's talk about the second incident, which was a ratings agency report. The ratings agency was concerned about the existence of effective leadership planning in the organization. And, and, and other you, things. And yes, other so things. But you were, you were asked basically to change what your report that was your response to the ratings agency. Yes. Uh, uh, because the company apparently wanted to present a rosier picture. But then, then you exact, were right. That's the exact. That's the way I. Why was, was that big enough? The the request to you, for you to refuse. Oh, you're kidding! This was a ratings agency, Moody's, that uh, assessed the valuation of Countrywide's debt, and um, and if given a bad, faulty rating, it could have cost the co it could have made the company illiquid. It could have cost billions mm -hmm. of dollars in revenues and. Um, and as I was told, they could shut us down. And, and so I, that's why you have to change your report and present it in a, in a, in a rosier light. Absolutely. Why was that not persuasive to you? Uh, because it would be me lying. And that's never a persuasive argument. There's mm -hmm. no reason to do that. There's never a good time to do a bad thing, mm -hmm. an evil thing, or an illegal thing. Now. Many people who have had successful careers like you um, uh, probably are wondering why was it worth it for you to do things which basically derailed the the, totally. the kind of opportunities that you had, uh, and you you'd been an executive top executive in at least three companies. Why why were these important enough to put your whole career at risk as you did? It was a question of principle. I don't lie. Uh -huh. um, I'm not going to help the company break the law. Uh -huh. I wouldn't help any company break the law. I'm just a bit player in the equation. There were investors that relied upon the company's representations. Um, investors of all ages, of all stages, at all stages, of all stripes. And you have to tell them the truth. You can't falsify information to a ratings agency or any agency. And you, you've talked about your upbringing and the impact that that had on your values and how you looked at ethical questions like this. Can you give us just a, a brief description of, of values in your upbringing? Yeah. I, I, um, both my parents were, were very much the quintessential vision-driven, values-based human beings before it became uh, cool to say that. They were very principled people. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad used to throw out those bromides like, what is popular is not always right, and what is right is not always popular. And, uh, and followed closely on the heels of that statement was, Michael, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So choose your battles carefully, but they should be battles. If your metal is tested, it should be on issues of principle, because you, you'll stand strong. And what I've learned 
um, even though the fight is not over, is that he was right when he said, right makes might. Mm -hmm. I took on collectively hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, a jury of my peers gave me the victory. Mm -hmm. um, and I had hoped they would. I, all I know is that um, I told the truth about everything, and all I know is that they told the truth about nothing. Mm -hmm. At this point, in the process, and I know there's still appeals yes. underway. Uh, has this been worth it? Is this what, are you glad you've done what you've done? You know, it's not a question, I've thought about this very often. Um, it's not a question of is it worth it, am I glad? You, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mm -hmm. didn't see that I had a choice. It was the right thing to do. As I speak to you now, I'm unemployed. And um, being 60 years of age in the worst economy of 80 years and hailing from countrywide financial, uh, um, it's going to be a steep slope. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, if, if I were confronted with the same circumstances as I was and tried mightily to, to settle and solve this, uh, not settle, to solve these problems um, the right way, including the third issue, which was critiquing the company for their uh, fund all loans mm -hmm. approach and telling them that that was going to, that no good could come of that. And that's thoroughly documented. Yeah, I'm it, confronted with the same circumstances. I would do it all over again. It's been very painful, financially, emotionally, mm -hmm. physically. Uh, the build. I was in that building at the time of uh, the toxicity. I had first, shortly thereafter, first time diagnoses of asthma, first time diagnoses of, diagnosis of uh, pulmonary function disease. Never had it before, never had breathing problems before. More important to me, so too have my colleagues and peers uh -huh. had those first time diagnoses. Countrywide has not been held fully accountable. And, um, and its new parent has not been held accountable. That's why they continue to get slapped with these outrageous fines by the SEC and others, um, always record setting because they haven't fixed what is broken. And what is broken, um, when the people at the top make decisions for expediency or based upon greed, or for any other reason than it's in the customers, shareholders, and employees, and taxpayers' interest, they need to go. Michael, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Good.